Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Uh, thank you very much for joining this session. My name is Lordo Campagno from DataArt. I'm a solutions architect, and I'm happy to be here presenting at IT Nonstop. Uh, together with me, we have Joel Spiro, who is the head of product at Rapid Travel. Uh, DataArt and Rapid have been working together for, I think, two and a half years now. So we were able to build this mutual trust relationship uh which allowed us to build to do many successful projects um let me uh tell you a bit a little bit about the agenda that we have for today which is you will get to know about rapi and rapid travel in particular then we and we're going to present the problem that was presented and how we approach the solution and later on we will i will go through some of the de technical details on how we uh tackle the technical complexities uh, to get to a solution very, very fast, right? Uh, Joel, thank you again for joining. I will hand over to you. So no, thanks for having me. Part. Okay. Hi, I'm Joel. Uh, I am, as Eduardo said, head of product uh, for travel, loyalty and alternate payments in, in Rapi. And I've been working in the travel tech industry for over maybe 18 years now uh, through that time mostly involved in technology back end doing a lot of the plumbing uh, having done a lot of various projects throughout the industry but also in various roles from programming to leading uh, businesses in different uh, countries within the region and all the different uh, particularities that that have uh, which gives us quite an interesting perspective uh, and this is not my first rodeo with data art um, I've actually done a few projects with Data Art along that timeline. Um, so we were very uh, aware of what Data Art brings to the table in terms of that. Um, but let me tell you a little bit about uh, what is Rapid Travel. Maybe for those that aren't in Latin America, uh, it's probably an unknown uh, company or what it does. Um, it very much sits in that space of super apps. I know super apps is a bit of a, a key word or a trigger word maybe. Uh, today, everyone wants to claim that they're a super app, but, but really uh, Rappi is a super app in the sense that it has high frequency. People are using it a lot. They use it for multiple use cases in their life. Uh, it started as a restaurant delivery service uh, that had a tacked on sort of like a mechanical Turk of you can get a person on a bike to basically do anything you want. I forgot my keys at a person's house. Uh, I can go get it uh, and, you know, he'll come and bring it to me. It's really, really adds so much value to the user's life and sometimes even gets sort of categorized as magic when you first see it. Um, but effectively, it's, you know, how can you bring the transparency of like an Uber experience where you know where everybody is at the same time to the agony of waiting for your food uh, in which, you know, you're pretty, you want to know when it's coming because you want to eat. Um, but over time, we realized as we built up that platform, uh, there are a lot of other services that we can leverage that particular delivery platform, that last mile. Uh, especially in dense areas uh, where we can bring you things. So we added on uh, other verticals uh, such as um, it's one step away, but it's like supermarkets. Uh, so doing your supermarket shopping, uh, pharmacy, uh, drinks, so alcohol, especially at nighttime, you know, the, uh, to the point where uh, we've even brought on our own sort of like kiosk where it's called Turbo, those 15 minute fast deliveries. We're doing 10 minute deliveries sometimes. Uh, it's, and that's where a lot of the magic comes in. Uh, and as we started you know, adding these services, we started going maybe even a little bit more digital and a little bit less reliant on uh, the delivery network. And we started adding things like banking services, insurance, and that's where travel comes in as well. Uh, effectively looking, where can we keep adding uh, value to these people that are transactioning with high frequency and trust this application? Uh, and once you start getting into the wallet and you start having uh, you know, the users um, let's say money, you also get credits when you maybe do promotions or you have a support case. Uh, and a lot of people, when you have a credit card, you tend to want to uh, do a travel piece in terms of it's aspirational, but also uh, it's something that somebody wants to finance as well when you have your credit card. So Rappi is in nine countries today. We operate in nine countries. Uh, in a few of those, we are uh, offering banking services with Rappi card. And we are actually a bank in Colombia, a certified bank in Colombia. And the Rappi card holders, that's probably our number one cohort for travel. Uh, we provide them for 5% cashback 
on all of their bookings. So we book for, we provide flights, hotels, car rental packages, uh, and we continuously are adding more and more uh, services and types of products uh, onto the that you know, sit within travel. But really anything that you can shop, we want to give that to Repi. Uh, and one of our main, main cohorts, the most important cohort, I would say, is our Prime subscription. So we have uh, a large group, like Repi has millions and millions of daily active users. Uh, of which a high percentage of that are prime. Uh, we've gone through a super sort of focus transformation to make those prime. I think we've grown at like 2.5% over the last eight months. So it's, it's really massive now. And everything we're doing is how can we provide value and more value for those prime users? And from a travel point of view, uh, obviously we want to give them the best uh, experience, um, but also how do we work with the providers to give them exclusive deals and basically just say if you have a rapi card you're a prime user uh, you have to book travel on on rapi because it makes so much sense so that's uh, that's a little bit about rapi so i guess why why are we here and what are we discussing what was the reason so, so you know rapi does this rapi does everything rapi's great um you know why why are we talking about it challenges or maybe you know a certain thing that that wasn't so great at the time um, and to give you a little bit of context of that uh, travel was conceived or the idea of wanting to put travel into that ecosystem obviously we were looking to asia uh, they've got companies in asia that's like the super app champion of the world and uh, in that sense uh, you look at them and you say all right, these guys are transactioning millions and millions of, of hotel rooms per night. Like, what are they doing right? Is that something that, you know, we want to be doing? We don't want to just be uh, delivery focused and maybe there's higher margin uh, and looking to that, we say, okay, let's bring travel on board. And as we were doing that, uh, as everyone knows, there was that grand black swan event of COVID, which basically changed a lot of our plans. Um, but in trying to get out before COVID, you know, we wanted to get our first MVP out the door or, or not even an MVP because we had already qualified that people were willing to book travel, especially high frequency users in, in, in Rappi. But our version zero had to be quick. It had to be fast. Uh, and when we, so we were very focused on flights to begin with, which is a very limited space. Uh, in flights, you're only dealing with uh, cities and maybe airports. People know the airports. They even might know the codes. Uh, so it's quite easy to find what you're looking for in that particular space. Um, so in order to attack that space, we didn't really have to put that much effort or thought into how we were going to do that part of the search engine, as in, where am I going? It's very basic. Um, but when COVID hit, we were like, oh, we, you know, we see maybe 50%, 60% of the people are looking at the same in, in sort of national destinations. And we could get away with even putting like, we were like, why are we getting people to type? The whole idea of Rappi is that you're not typing. You've got the credit card on file. It's just clicks. You know, you don't fill in forms anymore. Um, I know like most people are picking these five uh, options and we just put a very pretty uh, solution to say, hey, I assume you're picking one of these five. And they didn't even use most of the people, the search feature for where they want to go. So for a while we were, especially with COVID, we were okay with what we had, but then we were looking as COVID was fading out and people were starting to look at other places, things were opening up. We wanted to bring on the hotel piece. The hotel piece became more important. And we looked at that and we said, okay, we're starting to see these problems. We're starting to see cracks in what we've got. Uh, it's a lot more complex than the hotel piece. You've got points of interest. You've got a hierarchy. Uh, you've got uh, neighborhoods, cities, states, uh, searching for a particular hotel, people don't write the hotel correctly. They might leave off the brand. They might leave off the exact name, the way a hotel has been put in our catalog. And we really saw a large increase in that's uh, yeah, errors, cases in which we weren't satisfying the search term correctly. Um, and we were okay because of COVID. I think we had we were, we were lucky. We got a lot of lead time to fix that. But we started patching it ourselves. We were like, okay, let's try and do this. Let's try and do that. Let's try and do that. But every time we would make a, a patch, we would sort of like break something else. So it was really hard to fine tune and, and, and do it in a patch way. And we said, all right, we've got to start from, from first principles here. We've got to start again. Um, and, you know, it's not a focus for us right now. This, it's table stakes. Like it really is table stakes. You go into a site, you know what you want to find and you don't even think 
to do that. But if it's broken, it's very like, it's like, hey, hold on. That's a big sort of red flag and you lose trust. So we're like, all right, we've really got to fix this. We've got to fix this fast. And it's not a priority for us right now in terms of our roadmap. Um, but if we don't deal with it now, it's going to be a real problem down the track when we open up more. And that's why we said, all right, we're going to have to find experts in this that can help us with our, um, specifically our uh, elastic search, which is where we were doing it, uh, and how we can maybe re-engineer it in the flight space, but really behind the scenes, what we wanted to do was fix that in order to then scale it to the rest of our products. Because flights we could get away with, but hotels we weren't going to be able to do it without that. So that's what our problem was. And if we go to the next step, um, effectively what the solution was, was a version two. It was, you know, let's throw away what we have. Let's use some of the, like the, the, per, the, the, the little refinements that we had learned along the way uh, in terms of edge cases. But let's use that and think, all right, this is what we know. This is what we found. Uh, these were the problems that we were experiencing. Uh, we presented that to Data Art, and they were basically saying, all right, let's re-engineer, let's start again from uh, a point of view of Elasticsearch um, with everything that you have in mind. You know, this is what we're going to do. Uh, we think we can achieve this to the point where they were like, let me do a proof of concept. We'll come back to you. And I think it was maybe from five days uh, that they came back and they said, hey, you know, if we start from this, it's not perfect, but you know, we're attacking 80% of those problems that you said over the course of those five weeks of the plan of the project, we're going to, you know, refine it. We're going to get to all tick off all the boxes. Um, but it was pretty clear straight away that by changing how we looked at the problem, how we initially started and implemented the problem, knowing what we knew now of the scope of what we needed, uh, we were going to get the benefits from this project. Uh, and the benefits effectively are that uh, you can see it in the metrics that people once they were outside of those key sort of like known or popular destinations, uh, people were churning. So there were people that didn't find what they looked for, especially in hotels and left. Uh, they didn't give us the, the opportunity. Uh, you had people that maybe were taking a lot longer to complete the form than what you thought. Uh, and after implementing this, we saw an improvement in both those metrics in the top of funnel and also in the time to complete, um, which basically, again, I don't really need the metrics to show that this was needed because it was a user experience problem in that sense. And again, a user experience problem in something that you don't expect to not work the way that you expect it to work. Uh, so it was for us, it was very hygienic, uh, hygienic that then allowed us to continue to have great conversions that we were having uh, in the rest of the funnel. So I'll hand it over to Eduardo to explain uh, in a more technical fashion what that actually meant and what they did in order to provide those benefits to us. Thank you, Joel. Okay, so the first step that we took was to analyze the existing solution, right? Like, and there was actually two microservices already built in there, one for indexing the data and another one for searching the data. Uh, as you can see on this diagram, there was an indexer API, which was written in uh, Node.js and basically pulling the information about the destinations, meaning cities and airports, uh, from an internal API, uh, which belongs to Rappi, and then uh, pushing it into OpenSearch as documents. Uh, one of the key findings in, in this pushing to OpenSearch was that it was slow, right? And the main issue was that it was pushing them one by one instead of doing batches. Uh, another one was, uh, to, that it was generating too many documents because uh, to be able to support multiple languages and people searching in multiple languages for the same city name, then we, it was creating multiple documents, one for each language. And then during the search time, uh, these queries were taking longer, right? Because it was trying, failing, and then trying again with a different query. Uh, so there was much more business logic inside of the search API than on the indexer API. Um, there, there was also this concept of aliases, which is some sort of um, a way to indicate that you can name a city uh, with some word or name that the people would know about it, right? And, uh, but it, it was not coming from the API. Um, I'll, Another I'll, give you a, I'll give you an example okay, there. I'll, I'll give you an example there. Okay. For example, alias 
Uh, you have Sao Paulo. It's not just a language problem. Like people might call it Sao Paulo, San Pablo. So there's many different ways to look at it. But people even mix that or New York. There's like very, very different ways of, of saying the same city. Uh, and we have to capture that. So aliases were very important. Exactly. And, and you really want to support people searching with any language, right? And, and even, mm -hmm. even if you're searching from one specific location, maybe you search uh, for New York with New York or Nova York or Nova Yorkie, uh, depending on your language. But, you know, it doesn't matter where you come from, but it, it might matter or you can give some more precedence to certain words or certain search terms coming from certain locations. Uh, so, so that was it, right? Uh, re related to the code review, uh, there was already a microservices API, and there was already an API gateway passing uh, these search requests into uh, the search API, and then going into Open Search for making uh, the searches. Uh, so, we that API was built in Go, and we noticed that there was many, many refactors on this API. Uh, basically, to add more features, right? it was uh, modifying the previous ones, but then not thinking about the performance needed uh, for this endpoint. So that's why more and more searches were added into the search path. Uh, which was not optimal, right? Like, so to be able to uh, understand like uh, different search scenarios, it was trying to use one approach and then fall back to the next one and fall back to the next one. So I think that is one of the key findings that we have there because we didn't want to continue with that approach. Uh, let's talk about the new, oh, sorry, uh, let's talk about the proof of concept first. So. Uh, before even starting with the proof of concept, we wanted to understand what were the requirements, right? And technically, there was, uh, this is the whole list, right? And when you're searching for a city or an airport, like, it looks very simple what you're trying to do. But when you go into details, then you find a lot of scenarios, right? For example, you want people to find the results fast, right? Meaning that you're typing just a few letters and then you want to find the best result first right away so uh, we're not waiting until they fill the full term and then hit search but rather like as they start typing we wanted to show results and put the best result at the top so uh, you can see here on the left what were the list of requirements and how we approach it or how we plan to approach it for this proof of concept uh, we leverage this search as we type field type in open search is uh, not a very common scenario to use it, but it was actually meant specifically uh, and built specifically for this scenario, right? Uh, basically uh, indexing pieces of, the, of each term independently. So the search would go faster or it was, would be able to find the results faster. Uh, we also, Joel mentioned that there was uh, the ability to search by IATA codes, right? Like, so the city codes or airport codes. Uh, and basically what we wanted to do there was to uh, give a weight to each one of these fields. So imagine that we have the airport name and the airport code, right? Like, so if someone searches for the code, then we would want to give more precedence or more importance to the code because you know, if they're looking for the code, they're trying to go very, very specific to, to some result. We also wanted to support this uh, concept of curations, right? And what I mean by curations, what, what is that uh, we wanted to support giving aliases to the cities and airports, but also custom scores. There was some automatic process to understand what, what should be the base score for, for an airport or a city, right? How, how important is a city in there? Uh, we can make some math, right? And say, oh, we, based on the number of airports that exist on a city, uh, then it will have more importance, right? But we wanted to allow admins to modify that, to be able to indicate uh, which airports are more important based on your search location. Uh, and, and I think, Eduardo, of... it's important to, to highlight there that uh, that was not a requirement by us. 
So as in the curation was a requirement by us, but the idea that you can have certain heuristics to without having the configurability as in without having manual intervention still already have a good weighting system by using leveraging that like okay i can assume that this city is more important or this airport is more or this city is more important because it has more airports than another city so therefore it might have a bigger population and might have more usage and therefore might be what they're looking for that's definitely not something that we said hey we know that we wanted to do that uh, and why we were going through that that was something that you guys actually proposed and put in of your own sort of ideation while you were developing yeah, uh, th that's correct. We we brainstormed these requirements. We understood some of these edge cases, and and trying to come up with like you know the best solution, right? And uh, we also discussed about this uh, non-native language support. Uh, we already discussed it. Uh, we also wanted to make sure that we are supporting typos, like someone making a typo while they're while, while they're search uh, on the search term. And there there is a specific feature from Open Search called fuzziness. Uh, and we also leverage two more other features uh, which come out of the box in, in open search, which is the support for synonyms and the support for the stop words, right? Like you can see that many airports or cities have like these prefixes or suffixes, like saying international airport, which you know the, these, these terms don't provide any value, right? And we can remove them from the indexing part. So uh, you know they're, they're not creating noise or, or, or deviating the search results. Uh, let me jump now into the new architecture. It doesn't look very different from, from the previous one. Uh, we still have an indexer and we still have a search API, but we introduced this curations API. The curations API is what we've been discussing, right? Like allow admins uh, to push updates into the, uh, into the indexes so that we can give more precedence to certain cities or, or airports depending on the search term. For example, it will allow us to give a higher score, uh, add an alias without needing to redeploy the application or without like, uh, you know, uh, like just have a technical operations guy to go into the database or into Elasticsearch and change it manually. Um, the process was, uh, pretty much the same, you know, it was still pulling the data from destination API. But in this case, we, uh, we thought that we need to took the time to in the indexer to curate the results, right? Like, so before indexing the data in open search, we would apply the curations into these read destinations and then push it to open search in a very specific way so that the queries can be done without much effort. Right. And basically to support this need of making one single query for every request and get the results as fast as possible. Uh, here you can see also some of the technologies that we use, for example, Node.js, Nest.js and TypeScript as a language. We only have one uh, Git repository now compared to the previous uh, version where there was two, one for the indexer and one for, for the search. Uh, because we think that this is part of the same microservice, right? Uh, the idea is that the same microservice can be triggered like uh, from with two entry points, one, one for triggering the indexing part and the other one for uh, dispatching the search. Of course, these endpoints are protected with the appropriate security model. Uh, we also wanted to make sure that we have uh, backward compatibility with the previous search API. Uh, that was a, a critical part of the solution because we wanted to be able to a b test the new solution uh, while the two solutions are working in parallel so the api contracts should be exactly the same and we would be able to roll over to this new solution uh, as we uh, understand that this is working properly and it's satisfying requirements uh, we specifically chose uh, document db for curations because OpenDB uh, has MongoDB API uh, support, right? Basically, we can code the solution uh, using the MongoDB driver and specifically the Mongoose library to connect to DocumentDB and work with it as if it were MongoDB, right? Uh, at this stage, it was much easier to work with these kind of drivers because the team working on the solution uh, already had experience with the driver and it was pretty straightforward to use it. 
Uh, the other services that you can see on, on this diagram are ones which are, we already have experience with, API Gateway for uh, you know, routing this to, to, the, to the proper APIs, and the scheduled ECS scheduled task, which is Elastic Container Services scheduled task for running the indexer every night or every hour. I'm not sure in how it is running right now, but then you can get that these, these indexes can be refreshed uh, multiple times a day. Um, here we can see the development phase, right? Where I'm describing how curations work, how they are injected into uh, the document indexed into open search uh, during the indexing process. Uh, you can see uh, these uh, aliases and custom scores per country uh, added as curations on these uh, documents stored in DocumentDB. And the indexer would read the destinations and then apply the curations to later store them in open search. You can see how the you know it merges the information, uh, and we finally get to a document in Open Search with all of the details that we need to perform a search. Uh, with this in mind, we can make a very good query to Open Search to understand which fields we need to be using on the search time. Right, understand which ones are more important. For example, this field weighting approach that we took, saying, oh, if the code is very important, the uh, this names.en, meaning the name of the airport, uh, sorry, name of the city in, in English is very important, but maybe in Spanish is less important. And we can use uh, parameters coming from the API layer, uh, understanding from which location the user is searching. So we can modify at the API level how this query is built to get the proper results in one single query, right? The other thing that we did here is uh, do custom function scores on Elasticsearch. Uh, that's not a simple uh, solution, right? But basically it allowed us to, you know, adjust these weights uh, based on the search terms, right? And the location. So if we needed to do it, right? Like we, we could uh, adjust these parameters into the uh, custom score functions so that we could optimize the results. You can see how this can get very tricky, right? And how uh, modifying these weights can break other scenarios. So what we think that it was very important to build integration tests, right? That, that, that was a problem that the previous solution had with all of these refactors. What we thought is we need to build up a list of search terms and the expected search results. So for example, if I'm looking and, and typing Rio as a search term, then maybe someone, like everyone will want to get Rio de Janeiro first on the search results, but Maybe I'm from Argentina. Maybe I want to get Rio Gallegos like uh, 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 on the list very quickly. But maybe someone searching from from Peru doesn't care too much about Rio Gallegos, right? Like so. So that, that's why this was very important, right? To put the, the proper uh, weights to uh, every field and the function scores, and then use the integration test to make sure that, given the, these parameters, you're getting these results. Of course, this cannot be uh, unit tests in the code, they need to be uh, integration tests. Uh, and we were able to build, put together these integration tests as part of the solution so that we can run it every single time that we want to make a, a change into the algorithm, right? To change the weights or something so that we will be sure that we are not breaking any of the scenarios that were already built. Um, that's it. Uh, we then went ahead and deployed this solution uh, into production. And as I said, we tried to do A-B a testing. And I will hand the word again to Shoel to discuss about the results. 
And I think Eduardo, what you were mentioning there about the integration tests was fundamental in because if you're like you mentioned before in the past, we were like, hey, we've got this one problem, we would do some tweaks to change that problem. Uh, and the result of that was we would impact the weighting and, and whatever happened to another problem. So, uh, you know, it depends on who you were talking to, uh, what results we would be showing. Uh, and that would happen as well because we were on a global index uh, when we had countries. So we had some store managers from Brazil saying, no, but for my search, it's really important that these things come up when a search term like San, which is very general, uh, you know, is it San Diego or is it San Bariloche? You know, there's lots of different, you know, opportunities that can happen there. And we were like, really exactly. like so chasing our tails on that. San and, and then you're, what do you want to see? Sao Paulo yeah. or do you want to see San Diego from Estados Unidos? What, what, what? Right. What is and, right? Like and we were chasing our tail on that a lot. And and that meant as well that there was a little bit of trust that needed to be earned to actually put this solution in. You know, it had to, you know, you're dealing with something that's just like, yeah, it just works and, and whatever. But uh, somebody needs to be able to test that and say, okay, this is what it is. Would this work? Would this work? Would this work? Uh, and that was really important for us just to get an understanding of, is it better? Like, because it's hard to tell because we're dealing with like very, a lot of search terms. Um, so that was very important for us. Um, and the idea of uh, both that from a globalization and regional uh, localization point of view, that we could uh, adapt the weightings and what we shown first. And really that's probably the most important thing. Finding is important, like that's half the battle. And the other half is once you've found all those things that might match that term, uh, how do you know what the order is? Like, how do you know which one we should show first? So uh, we had, cases in the thing where like you would go through a certain amount of uh, letters, let's say, and you might already expect to show, obviously, you know, I'm searching for Miami, maybe Miami or New York, right? New, uh, but new can match with like a thousand cities or, or whatnot. So, you know, how do you make sure that in the cutoff of the top 20 that you're returning, uh, the most important cities are in that. And uh, for us, that was uh, a very important thing, but that that idea of the weighting of different terms, like you, you, you mentioned it, that in the context with which you were doing, it was for airport, it was for IATA, and then there was city. So there's three levels there. Um, and, and most of the time we were looking at that because this wasn't just, you know, this is the solution. This was, this is the suggested architecture. This is a solution for a much bigger use case that we knew we were going to have before. So when we were building it, we weren't just looking uh, at, Flights. Flights was, okay, this is the easiest way to know that it's going to work because it's a limited set. But when we do it, we have to make sure that it applies to the other context, which is hotels, which I was mentioning before, is much harder. And that was the next steps and that continues to be the next steps. Uh, that's where it really fell down. And that's where when we were bringing in, we knew we were bringing in a new catalog where we increased the amount of hotels and the locations from like, 50,000 to 500,000. So it was like a, a 10 X uh, change there. And when doing that and wanting to open up to be able to search for a specific hotel name and for zones and whatnot, and we really wanted to open up what you could do there. Uh, if we hadn't done this work in preparing the base for that, and also the knowledge transfer in our internal team to be able to understand how to play with open search, the way that you guys suggested the architecture, um, we have subsequently uh, implemented that across uh, different products. So we've got the uh, different product types. So we have it in, in, in hotels, we have it in cars, we have it in packages. Um, we continue to manipulate through the microservice, the, the custom indexing. So it allows us to, to play with those weightings. Um, and as I mentioned earlier on, what were the key benefits with that? Uh, you know, in the metrics, you see these uh, increasing in the funnel in that particular part between you know, opening the search and actually making a search uh, as well as the time to convert for that. So for us, uh, it was a operational improvement. It was also, let's say a, a UX improvement, but at the same time, it was an unblocker to allow us to really push forward, which we were a bit like hesitant to do without this hygienic factor of search, uh, but to really say, okay, we can now push on to our clients, hotels, we can now push onto our clients' packages and whatnot, because we're confident that their first experience that they get with us uh, will be of a high standard after doing this. So that was basically the overall uh, benefits for doing so. Perfect, perfect. Thank you very much, Joel. I think we got to the end of the presentation.